how do we work on human factors around our workmanship? Within our business, within our scope of influence, within my engine and NASA's uh, supply chain. For us in Airbus, the workmanship, and it's been based on different literatures, uh, is a combo of know-how and soft skills. And in our mind, a good human, someone working well, has got four key pillars. He's got an eye, a robot called culture. He's got a good behavior. He's got a good knowledge with strong skills. This is the human for whom we are designing our processes. But then when we work on the human factors, internally in Airbus, um, we study the human limits. We study the capacity and the capabilities of the human. And we also work on the characteristics which influence the way people interact with the environment. Uh, on the work and the workplaces. So basically, we cover within the frame of our human factors. Um, we cover the person's capacity to think and reason, not only flying, also designing aircraft, also manufacturing, assembling. Um, we also work on factors associated with the uh, work uh, environment and on the ergonomics, and the way the tools and technologies are used. If I take just a quick example of um, external sources of failure regarding human factors or preventive actions, to go to them, say, you may have heard about the 12 vertices, and it's not an other thing, it's just global. Um, communication, as I said, um, we need to reinforce the communication. Uh, humans are working well when they operate in a good communication uh, environment. Control complacency, uh, that was a feedback from Mr. Gibbs from Cate. Uh, never, never assume, yeah, it's going to be fine. Reinforce the knowledge, it's linked to training. Uh, eliminate the distractions. That's one of our key topics. Shall we allow our future to have the mobile phone on the station? Yeah. Before that job, I was on the finance and behind the F80. It took us ages to take the decision. Shall we allow the guys to work on an aircraft with their mobile phone during the World Cup? That's a key topic. And I truly don't have the answer. I'm just opening the question now. Um, reinforce teamwork. What is the percentage of the objective we give to our teams, which are collective? Do we allow our team to work on something which is not directly in their objective but covering the whole industry? Fatigue? Discipline? Assertiveness? or lack of assertiveness is, a dirt, is one of the dirty dozen. In Tenerife, the co-pilot said twice, there is an aircraft in front of us. But then the pilot decided to take off. That's one of the dirty dozen words that are linked to the catastrophe. Commitment, commitment to our customer, commitment to our standard, and making sure that we apply our good standards. Stress. Um, I, if, we, if we look at the um, indicator regarding stress, um, I don't have a feeling that we are improving on stress. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, from an industry perspective, um, I think it's one of our biggest um, uh, issue on, on human factors. Reinforce awareness and then the norms and recommendations. So I was really wanted to share with you these dirty dozens because when we work on prevention tools and prevention processes, now we also need to work on how can we make sure that the human factors will not disrupt 
our prevention initiatives. So the question I will ask the ASQ is how do we prevent these dirty dozens from disrupting our preventive, preventive uh, prevention process? Which is, I know you may think it's one more step, okay? Because we, a few years ago, we were really pleased and glad to start applying prevention. Okay, PFMEAs, DFMEAs. I even had the feedback from some of my um, direct um, suppliers. It's not in the contract. Who cares? We need to prevent. The market is there, quality issues are still there. We need to prevent. We don't speak about the contract, we speak about our industry. So, yes, I think today the, currently the, the trend in our supply chain, in my supply chain, is everyone is happy to start working on prevention. But the question I'm asking here is how can you make sure that these prevention initiatives are not impacted by the human factors? You may think it's too much, it's uh, just um, too high, the bar is too high, but there are some industry or fields where the zero defect is not an action. Uh, and I do think we should not accept the non-quality. I generally think we should not accept non-quality. Nothing is impossible unless we think it is. Before concluding my, my presentation, I really want to thank Gail Pusey. Um, she's with me today, she's my quality director. So she's supporting me on, on all the initiatives we, we do lunch on our supply chain, and she also helped me to prepare the slides. So thank you very much, Gail, for that. The key takeaways um, for today, just one slide, final one. The market is huge. Nothing is too small to be forgotten. We need a collective mindset change to drive our high value added industry to zero defect. Thank you.